Hi everyone and welcome to another video from Eric's Electronics Workbench. In this video we'll be taking a look at this ICO 1030 regulated power supply. Now this is ICO the electronic instrument company not to be confused with ICO EIKO which is a manufacturer of incandescent lamps and lighting supplies. So the, this video will be done in two parts. The first part will go through the unit, attempt to power it up, see what repairs and restoration will be required, and we'll take a quick look at the schematic. And then in the second part of the video, we'll actually go through and verify that the power supply is of course functioning correctly, check the accuracy of the meters, uh, look at the functions that the power supply has and the features that it has, and then I'll demonstrate how to actually use the power supply by connecting it to a vacuum tube. So let's get started. Okay, here we are looking at the front of the power supply, a little bit closer view. And it really does look like it's in very good condition. I don't see any physical damage to the unit. The case is in good shape on the outside, and the front panel looks, you know, very good. The uh, various terminal connections and binding posts at the bottom uh, look good. They seem to turn okay, nothing's bound up on those. The knobs rotate and feel okay when they turn. Switches all seem to function correctly, nothing's bound up or broken. Meters are in place and in good uh, condition, really no scratches or anything like that. So of course we'll power it up and see, you know, electrically exactly what's going on, but it doesn't look like it's been abused or had anything, you know, seriously done. It hasn't been dropped or something like that, so um, that's always a good sign. So on the front we have the DC uh, milliamps for the output current and a DC voltmeter which measures the voltage of the main output or the bias voltage. And we'll get into what the purpose of those two outputs are and how you'll use them a little bit later. There's also uh, AC voltages right here, 6.3 volts AC and another 6.3 volts AC with a center tap. And uh, you can get various combinations of voltages uh, across those as needed for the filament on the tube that you're testing or the tube circuit that you're testing. You can see 3 amp rating there, 3 amp rating over here. Now the output of this power supply, 0 to 400 volts DC at 0 to 150 milliamps. There is a restriction to that. If you look at the DC milliamp meter over here, maybe a little bit hard to see. Zoom the camera in a little bit closer over here. Back off a little bit there. And my guess is this has to do with the power dissipation uh, in the circuitry internally, but um, you can see on here there is a little black dot and a triangle. The black dot's at 150 and the little triangle is at 100 milliamps. And there's a note down here and the triangle says continuous current rating to 200 volts and the black dot says continuous current rating to 400 volts. So that's something to note uh, the current rating versus the output voltage. I'll move the camera over to the voltmeter and you can see the voltmeter has two scales. There's the 0 to 400 on the top and that's for the main output or your B plus voltage and the bottom scale is half of that. It's 0 to 200 volts and it's written in red. It's on the bottom of the scale and that voltage is the bias output voltage which is variable from 0 to 150 volts uh, 2 milliamps max, so very very low current, but the bias circuit in a tube or the bias supply in a tube circuit has very low current uh, requirements. So um, again, a very very low current, uh, but that's normal for a tube circuit. And even a single vacuum tube would have just very very small current requirements on uh, on the grid. Uh, so we'll again take a look at that later and uh, take some actual measurements and connect this to a vacuum tube once it's restored and uh, functioning. Okay, I'll zoom the camera back out again. And let's take a look at the uh, back of the power supply. Just turn things around here a little bit. So, really nothing going on on the back, but again, uh, no damage. The case looks like it's in good condition. The cord is in good condition. The line cord is fine. I don't see any cracks in the insulation. It's flexible, so uh, you know it'll be fine to use as is. There may have been a data tag or something down here uh, that's missing, but the model is, of course, written on the front. It also says 1030 on that tag right there. I'm not sure if that was a serial number or something like that, but uh, it looks like to get into the unit, it just has two screws on the back right here, and I imagine the back cover will come off. 
or slide off from the front and the chassis probably uh, you know comes out the front so we'll do that next the bottom of the unit just has the little feet on the bottom but there's no screws or hardware to remove down there so it's just these two screws on the back so grab my screwdriver here and take these out and we should be able to get into the unit and take a closer look Okay, here we are looking at the back of the power supply with the cover removed. And as I mentioned, it was just the screw here and right here that is, you remove those and the cover slides right off the back. See, it's just, you know, a hollow inside and the chassis comes right out the front. This edge right along here just fits into uh, under this front edge on the power supply around there. So now that we're on the inside of the power supply, we can take a look around and it looks really nice from the top view, just kind of has a, a little bit of a film kind of dust inside, but uh, that'll clean right up, no issues with that. Look at this nice uh, mirrored chrome finish that's on the inside there, that looks like a mirror on the front, that's pretty cool. Now something that I noticed, and this is really a surprise and really cool to see, but it looks like all the vacuum tubes are original because they all say ICO on them. So, turn the chassis a little bit closer here. As you can see on the side, I think I'm gonna have to turn it a little bit more. Get the cord pinched underneath there. It's kind of a sharp edge on the back of that chassis. But you can see the ICO name down there. And see right here. See the CO of the name ICO there, probably the EI right in there. You can see there on that tube. This tube back here, let's see, turn it a little bit here. And we've got the rectifier tube. It's made in Great Britain. Let's see, I think it's in the camera there. Yep, you can see the ICO name there. And turn things all the way around here to this side, and it looks like you can probably see it's a 6X4. Yep, you can see the ICO name down in there. So, all original tubes. Now, hopefully they work, because it would be really cool to be able to keep all those original tubes in there. So we'll find out. So, let me turn the chassis here. I'm gonna take a look underneath the unit. The transformer side down, it's heavier like that. So there. Let me zoom the camera back out here. We're Pretty close and can't really see the whole thing here. There, I think that's a pretty good view. So just looking over, just a quick view there, at the overview of it, it, it looks all original. So I don't see anything modified or really messed with in there, so that's a, a good start. It doesn't look like there's any you know wires on the transformer. Nothing looks overheated or, or uh, you know darkened where something would have been getting very hot. So that's always a good sign. Now, these electrolytics in here are going to need to go. Um, we'll try and power it up and see if it's you know functioning well enough to leave those in just for initial test. Uh, we'll do it with a current limited variac and isolation supply, but. Uh, for long-term reliability, and that's the goal of this power supply, is to make it reliable and something that can be used on the workbench. So with that in mind, these uh, electrolytics all need to go. Those will be electrically leaky. Uh, I don't see them physically leaking, uh, nothing major anyways. It wouldn't be uncommon to maybe see some corrosion or something around them, but um, sometimes on the end, you know, on the, on the seal starts to leak a little bit and you'll get kind of a white fuzz or a corrosion on them, but uh, I don't see anything that's been leaking out, you know, a major problem or they're not swollen or anything like that where the end is blown off or something uh, serious, but uh, like I say, they, they definitely need to go. Um, they probably are well out of spec, or at least several of them, I, I imagine. I mean, they're usually not too good at this point. So this has the uh, squared off end style resistors, the Allen Bradley style resistors. Those carbon composition resistors uh, tend to be okay. They can absorb moisture, but they're not as bad as the old round end style or roundies. So I'll test a few of those and see uh, if they look okay. If you test a few and, and it looks like they're checking out all right, then the remainder of them is probably gonna be okay. 
like two adjustments up here, two potentiometers. Take a look at the schematic and see what those are for. And front panel back in here, again, you've got that mirrored uh, chrome surface in here. That's That whole front panel has that. That's kind of cool. So I don't see any issues with the power supply that would prevent us from uh, powering up the unit at this point and seeing uh, you know if it comes to life and you know exactly uh, how it performs with the, all the original components in place. So I'll go ahead and power that up using the current limited isolation transformer in Variac. But before we do so, let's take a quick look at the schematic. All right, here's the schematic for the ICO 1030 regulated power supply. So starting over on the left side right here, you can see there's the AC line coming in. It comes through the power switch, through the primary of T1, and through the uh, two amp fuse, and then there's a neon power indicator on the front panel. It's across the AC line. So T1 right here is located right here on the chassis. So starting at the top up here on the secondary, we can see there's a 175 volt uh, winding and it's applied to CR1, which is a solid state rectifier as compared to the vacuum tube rectifiers down here. So CR1 is a very low current supply that comes over here and is applied to the plate of the 6AU6. So the 6AU6 is right here. And the purpose of this uh, supply is just to operate this part of the voltage regulation circuitry. You can see there's some basic filtering up here, two electrolytic capacitors, a 1K resistor. Now these electrolytics up here, 20 microfarads, there's some more down here. Those are the type that we'll be needing to replace. Those have aged and need to be changed out at this point. So we'll get to that in a little, uh, little bit later in the video. So the 6AU6 over here is controlling these two 6L6s, and the 6L6s are right here. So going back over here to this winding, you can see there's a center tap and then 440 volts on each side of the center tap. And that center tap runs down here. It comes through this tube, and I'll explain why they did that in a moment. It comes over here, and it comes to the output. Now the bias voltage positive and the regulated main B plus voltage negative are connected together. The bias voltage is a negative supply versus a positive supply on the regulated output. We'll look more at the B plus uh, voltage and the bias voltage and how you connect those to a vacuum tube a little bit later. So over here, you can see these uh, two 440 volt uh, connections right here on the secondary are applied to the plate of the 5AR4. Again, the 5AR4 is back there. And the output of that rectifier is this cathode, 640 volts DC, so some very high voltage in the circuit. Some filter caps right here, and then it's applied to the plate of the uh, two 6L6s. Each plate is connected together. These tubes are in parallel for uh, current sharing, right, just for power handling reasons. Now, these capacitors right here are in series, and you can see there's some equalizing resistors across them. The reason these capacitors are in series is to increase the voltage rating. So when you add capacitors in series, the voltage ratings increase, but the capacitance values uh, half. So this is 80 microfarads at 80 microfarads. You would have a total of 40 microfarads right here, but 350 volts and 350 volts add together. So you'd have 700 volts. So uh, again, that's the, those are in series for that reason. So on the output over here, you can see the two cathodes are connected together on the 6L6s. The output comes over here through a power switch on the front panel for convenience, just to turn the uh, B plus on and off as needed. Through M1, which is that current meter on the front panel, and then to the positive uh, jack on the front panel. So down here, you can see this 6X4, which is another vacuum tube rectifier, and that tube is right here. So this, uh, the 6X4 is the rectifier for the bias voltage supply. And you can see it comes off of just one side of this winding right here. The two plates are uh, connected together, so they're in uh, parallel. Where up here you can see the two plates are not in parallel. Each one is connected to the winding. 
So this center tap right here comes over, comes down, and then through this tube between pins five and one. And the reason they did that is because if this zero B2, which is a glow discharge or cold cathode tube, there's also zero A2, same kind of tube down here. These are uh, voltage reference or regulator tubes. If this is removed from the circuit, the output voltage would swing wildly. It would you know, not regulate anymore. And so as a safety precaution, removing this tube breaks the output. So this center tap can no longer make a connection out here to the output. It's basically equivalent to opening a switch. So you can see the same thing is done down here. If this tube is removed, this right here goes through that tube, it's broken, and then you would no longer have a bias voltage. So down here on the bias supply, you can see there's a capacitor right here, C7, for some filtering, another 20 microfarad, 500 volt cap. You can see right here, a 40 microfarad, 450 volt cap on the other side of this resistor. So these resistors are adding uh, some uh, filtering uh, down here. The combination of these resistors and capacitors, I should say, add the filtering. You'll notice there's no inductors in this supply, but uh, you can accomplish the same thing as an inductor would do by using resistors and uh, the various capacitors. So these uh, voltage reference tubes right here, or glow discharge tubes, uh, act as a uh, voltage regulation uh, control for the uh, power supply and the uh, 6AU6. But you can see right here there's uh, R16, it's a 200K resistor potentiometer, and the wiper is the connection to the negative on the bias voltage. So moving this across that resistance is what changes this bias voltage out here. Okay, you can see that is brought down to this side of the resistance. It's, you're gonna have more connection over here, less voltage drop as the wiper is run up this way. You have more voltage drop and basically when it connects to the top of this resistor, you're effectively just making a connection right up here and you would have no output voltage over here. So down here at M2, you can see there's the uh, voltmeter and the selector switch. So it's shown right now in the position where it would be measuring the B plus voltage. So this side of the voltmeter comes up here. There's a 400K resistor, 1%, very high uh, tolerance, very precise resistance. So it's coming from the positive output. So through that, that's dropping voltage through the meter, through the switch, and to the negative right here. So it's effectively putting the voltmeter across the B plus output. When this switch is moved to the other terminal right here, now you're opening this connection. So that connection is no longer there. And it's moving the switch up here. Okay. When that's done, now the voltmeter, this side of the voltmeter is being connected to the positive right here on the bias supply. Okay. And this side of the voltmeter comes down and goes through a 200K 1% resistor and then comes up and is on the other side of the bias supply. So by moving that switch, it effectively moves M2, the voltmeter, between these two supplies. And you'll notice that the 200K and the 400K exactly half the value. And we notice that that scale on the front of the, on the uh, voltmeter it was half for the two different ranges. So it makes sense on those uh, values there. Now, on the chassis right here, there's two adjustments. They're not labeled. However, if you look right here, there's a zero cal and a 400 volt cal. So these appear to be those adjustments, and they're on each side of the potentiometer that sets the zero to 400 volt on the main output. So you can see that right here. This is on the front panel. And if we follow the wiper back over here, it's coming right into the 6AU6, part of that regulation uh, circuitry, coming up here and uh, so on, measuring the positive output voltage through some uh, voltage dividers and so on. Now, this zero cal and the uh, 400 cal is basically the, the two extreme ranges. That's the top end of the voltage setting and then zeroing out. So we'll need to check and make sure that those are set correctly and we'll do so a little bit later on. Again, there's no markings on here, but because the value, this is a one meg ohm and down here we have a uh, 500K. So we can take a reading across those if there's a 
confusion or concern on which is which. Um, we can probably tell by just turning them and the effect that it has on you know which end of the voltage is being uh, affected. They may be marked as well as to their value and then that would make it very clear as to which one is which. So we'll take a closer look at those later on once the power supply is up and running and we've done any repairs that are needed. So I think that should be about it on the uh, schematic. One other thing uh, over here, you can see on the uh, various voltages that are 6.3 volts AC, numerous windings over here that all have that rating. So that's just the, the filament supply. And if you look at these tubes where it says YY or over here XX, that's just uh, implying that those connections come over here to the same like uh, connections XX right there, Y. Y right there, so you can just imagine wires or a connection make from those uh, letters right there to the same letter over here on the schematic. Now down here on the front panel, these terminals right here provide uh, voltage to run the filament on the tube that you're testing. So you can see 6.3 volts AC, 6.3 volts AC, center tap on this one down here. And that's derived off of these windings down here. So a 6.3 volts, here's a 6.3 volt with a center tap. And so these are the uh, windings that are just connected directly to the front panel. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and get this power supply connected. And uh, we'll again be connecting it to the isolation transformer and variac through current limiting. And we'll slowly bring the voltage up and see uh, exactly what happens. So I'll be back as soon as I get the power supply connected. Okay, I have the power supply connected to the uh, isolation transformer and variac along with the uh, current limiting, which is an incandescent lamp in series with the AC line coming into um, this line cord right here into the power supply. So that current limiting will uh, indicate if there's uh, any serious you know, current draw or short circuits, that bulb would just get very bright and um, we'll just shut things down at that point if that happens. Uh, but the first thing is to bring the voltage up slowly, and if everything looks okay, I'll let the power supply sit, you know, at that low voltage for, say, a half hour or so, and then uh, proceed from there and bring the voltage up a bit higher. So we'll start by bringing up the voltage uh, just a little bit, and we'll see if there's any indication over here on the uh, digital multimeter. So if you're following along, please know that you're doing so at your own risk. So this power supply has very high voltages throughout the circuitry inside. So please know the safety that's required when working on one of these power supplies and the risks that are involved. And uh, of course, just be safe if you are working on one of these. So again, you're doing so at your own risk. So I'll go ahead and turn the power switch on. Turn the regulated supply on. This is down at zero right now, so we'll just go ahead and leave that at that point. This is also at zero. And I'll go ahead and bring up the AC voltage on the Variac. That's about 60 volts right now on the Variac. I see a very slight glow on the uh, incandescent lamp, so there is some current, but nothing excessive. So it looks like the voltmeter is starting to give a little indication over there. Yeah, that voltage looks like it is climbing up. Now keep in mind this is at zero right now. There's no output uh, on this adjustment, but the output is clearly climbing. We're at 120 volts and climbing right now, but until the regulation uh, takes over and the tubes come up into emission uh, and begin to control the output voltage, you know, I would expect this to be at some value you know, different from where this uh, setting on that control is at. So we definitely have some uh, activity there. And the bulb is remaining very dim, so that's good to see. So I'll increase the voltage a bit more. So we're at 75 volts right now. As 
You can actually see the voltage now is beginning to drop on the output. So that means that likely the uh, regulation circuitry is taking over and beginning to control that output. You can see that the voltmeter right here is showing an indication, so that's good. In fact, let's see, we have 57 volts on the multimeter, and if I get down here and look at that, it is very close. It, 50 volts would be, you know, of course, halfway between the 0 and 100, and it's just a little bit over halfway, so of course that makes sense for the reading that we're getting, so that's good to see. That meter is probably uh, accurate, so we'll keep an eye on that and make sure that its indication matches the, the meter over there. Of course, there is no load connected, so we don't expect to see anything on the current meter over here. So I'll go ahead and increase the voltage a bit more. So I'm at 90 volts right now through that current limiting incandescent lamp. The lamp is remaining very dim. The film is glowing, but uh, not excessively bright. So I'm not seeing anything, no smoke or uh, any smelling anything hot, so that's all Good signs right now. So we'll come over here and we'll try and turn this up. So yeah, that's interesting. It, it does allow that to come up now. So there's back down to zero. So again, uh, we don't have full voltage to the unit, so that could, would affect the regulation, I'm sure. But. Uh, those settings that that zero cal and the 400 calibration may not be set correctly either so we'll have to keep that in mind that this may not zero out but uh, it does allow this to come up when you turn this like so right there is a hundred volts you can see 98 right there very very close right on a hundred right there yeah let me zoom this in a little bit here Not too bad. That looks very stable. And really right on the 100 mark right there. There to 200, let's see. The control seems to be working very well. So yeah, at 200, so the meter seems very accurate. So that's good to see. Then all the way over, it will not let that go any further right there. Incandescent lamp is still about the same, so 305 volts right there. But of course we don't have full voltage applied to the unit right now, so again this should go over to 400, but uh, we don't have the full AC input right now. So I'll back that off, I'll let that sit around 100 volts over there for now. So at this point, I'm going to let the power supply sit for about a half an hour, just at this, uh, you know, lower input voltage right now. Uh, when on my system, I have 90 volts going in through, to, but there's a current limiting through the bulb, and the bulb is dropping voltage. So there's not actually 90 volts being applied right now to the unit. It's probably about 80 volts. It typically drops about 10 volts on the bulb. It, it could vary depending on the load, but. Uh, at any rate, uh, it's not seeing anywhere near the full AC input right now on the unit, so um, that's okay. We want to have it just sit here at, at a lower input voltage for a while and uh, make sure that everything looks okay. So again, I'll let that sit for about a half hour or so, and then we'll switch it over to the full AC input and then see what happens. Here we are looking at the incandescent lamp that's in series with the AC line cord. Um, that's uh, going to the power supply that we're testing. So you can see it's glowing very dim right now, and 
this bulb is a 100 watt incandescent lamp and I can change that to other wattages as needed depending on what we're testing. I find 100 watt typically is acceptable for uh, units like this uh, or radios and other devices um, that you know typically draw just the average amount of power, nothing too excessive. So again, 100 watts uh, allows the current limiting but can still allow enough voltage that the unit can power up. You don't drop too much voltage on here. If you were to put, say, a 25 watt lamp in here, you would drop too much voltage on the lamp and you know it would just limit too much really. Uh, you would, it would be hard to get the tubes to come up into emission and so forth. So uh, you just have to use the type of lamp that's uh, suitable for the device under test. And if you're not sure, you can always start with something lower in wattage and work your way up. This switch right here just allows me to switch between the current limiting or full voltage. So when this switch is up right now, all the current goes through this filament. When the switch is down, it basically shorts out the lamp and allows the full AC voltage, whatever voltage the Variac is set to actually, um, to be applied to the uh, outlet on my workbench. And then that outlet is of course what the power supply is plugged into. So that's the deal with the uh, current limiting and uh, how that functions over here on the bench. Okay, here we are back at the power supply and it's been operating for over a half hour now with uh, no indications of trouble, nothing smelling hot or no smoke, nothing serious like that. And the output has been sitting right around 100 volts, 99.9, .9, uh, looking very good. So at this point, I'll switch out the incandescent lamp that's current limiting and we'll apply the full uh, line voltage to the power supply and see if it's functioning correctly and how the output voltage looks and if it's adjustable over its uh, normal range. So. The first thing I'll do is switch out that incandescent lamp for the current limiting. So that's now out of the circuit and we have 90 volts being applied to the uh, power supply from the Variac. And again, no current limiting. So you can see that voltage dropped as the voltage regulating circuits are you know, taking over and the tubes are coming into full emission. So we will increase the Variac and go all the way up to 120 volts. So there's 120 volts right now. So let's start by lowering this control down. So yeah, now that's looking very good. So that's basically down very close to zero. It's got 0 0.6 volts, 0.62. So looking good. If we come over here now and start to increase this back to about 100 right there. The meter is looking right at 100, so that looks good. There's 200, and the meter is indicating 200, so it looks like the accuracy is good. Up to about 300 right there, 299, 300. Yep, that's looking good maybe just slightly under 300, maybe like about the needle width under 300, but not bad at all. We'll go all the way to the maximum output, and yeah, look at that, 399 volts. And we're clear over here at very, very close to 400. So it looks like the power supply is functioning well on the B plus output. So let's take a look at the bias output and then we'll also connect a load and we'll see if the uh, amp meter is functioning correctly. So this is turned down to zero. This is at zero. I'll move the leads over to the bias supply and we'll take a look at that voltage. So as I mentioned before, the bias positive and the output, regulated output negative are electrically tied together. And I don't know if you can see quite on the camera, but uh, there's a line that's drawn between this terminal and this terminal just indicating that these are electrically connected together. So this is a negative uh, supply in relation to this uh, supply output. When the leads are connected to this plus and minus in this fashion, you'll get a positive reading over here. So we'll switch this over to the bias voltage. Increase this and look at that. We do have a bias voltage. Now this scale is in half of what the other one was. So instead of 0 to 400, it's 0 to 200. So this is 50 volts. And we're very, very close to 50 right now. If I 
nudge that up like that. So we have 50 volts there, and this is reading right at 50. So that's looking very good. There's a hundred. Not bad. Now this is supposed to go to 150, and we do get 150 right there. So that looks good. And it does look like it goes a bit more, 177. There's no load on this circuit right now. I'm sure if there was a load, it may not go all the way to 177, but uh, 2 milliamps max, again, very low current supply on the bias output. This uh, amp meter right here is only for reading the main regulated output. It does not indicate the current on the bias supply. So let me hook up a resistor over here to the regulated output and we'll see if the amp meter is able to uh, indicate correctly. So I'll be back as soon as I get that hooked up. Okay, I now have a resistor connected across the output terminals on the regulated supply. This is a 2500 ohm resistor and it's connected in series with the digital multimeter which is now in the current setting so that we can compare the reading on the multimeter to the meter over here and see if this meter is in fact functioning correctly. So I'll go ahead and increase the voltage. Bring this up to about 100 volts. There's about 100 volts right now. We do have a reading over here, so we have uh, 39, almost 40 right there. So very, very close to 40 milliamps. And over here, it's exactly on 40. So you can see on the camera, I'll zoom that in a little bit here. As you can see that reading over here is looking very good. 50 is the right there. 100 would be mid-scale. And the main tick marks are in 10 milliamp increments. So looking very good there. So now I'll increase the voltage up a bit more just to see if the reading uh, is correct as we go a bit higher. There's very, very close to 200 volts. I don't want to go above 200 because it'll exceed the power rating of the resistor. So we have 78 milliamps. And it does read 78 milliamps on the meter over here as well. We're very, very close to 78. You can see over here we have 50. 60, 70, 80 would be the next mark, and it's just a bit under 80. So looking very good at this point. Yeah, that resistor is getting pretty toasty there. I'll let that cool a little bit. So at this point, it looks like the power supply is functioning well. And the next step will be to go through and replace some of those electrolytic capacitors. Uh, you know, again, we want to make the power supply as reliable as possible, and although it functions right now, um, you know, those old electrolytics that are in there could go at any moment. I mean, they're, they're just not something that you could trust at this point, and they all appear to be original. So uh, to keep things as reliable as possible, those need to go. One of those electrolytics goes out. It could damage a tube. It could damage a transformer. I mean, any a number of other things could be damaged as well. So um, we don't want that. We want to avoid you know, any problems that could, you know, potentially destroy the power supply, of course. So uh, just a, a good thing to do is to change out those electrolytics. While I'm in there, I'll go ahead and look for any other issues. I'll take some readings on some of the resistors, make sure that they're looking good. Uh, I imagine they are because the power supply is functioning very well. I don't see anything, you know, wildly off. Uh, you know, voltage regulation looks good. Meters are reading good. So... Uh, again, everything is looking really good at this point. I'll go through and clean the chassis. It just has some dust and you know, not even that much dust in it, but a little bit of a kind of just a, a buildup on the chassis. It's not anything too excessive, uh, but just go through and kind of clean things up in there and, and make it look uh, as uh, good as we can. So that wraps up this first part of the video, and I will be back as soon as the repairs and uh, restoration progresses and I have uh, the capacitors changed out and any other components that I change, uh, anything else that I find, I will share that with you and that will be in part two. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to this channel, now would be a good time to do so. Until next time, 
Goodbye.